In this video, we want to look at the unit circle and some of the basics surrounding that, finding sines and cosines of angles. So let's consider first a review of right triangle trigonometry. So we have a right triangle here and there's an angle theta. And we have a side that's opposite angle theta. We have the hypotenuse of the right triangle and we have the adjacent side. And from this we know that sine theta is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Tangent theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent or sine theta over cosine theta. Cotangent theta is equal to the adjacent side over the opposite side, or cosine theta over sine theta. Secant theta is equal to the hypotenuse over the adjacent side, which is 1 over cosine theta. And cosecant theta is equal to the hypotenuse over the opposite side, which is 1 over sine theta. So let's consider a unit circle, and it's called a unit circle simply because it's a circle that has radius 1. So if we draw a ray, the green ray that you see there, from the origin to any point on the circle, then it forms some angle theta with the x-axis. That point on the circle will always have as its x-coordinate cosine theta and its y-coordinate sine theta. So if for any ray we know what the x and y coordinates are of the point that it hits on the circle, then if we have a unit circle, we also know the cosine and the sine of that angle made between that ray and the positive x-axis. So let's look at some basic angles here. So I've labeled here on the unit circle the angle 0, the angle pi over 2, the angle pi, and the angle 3 pi over 2. And notice, just as practice, I always use radians because radians are real numbers, but you could use degrees if you chose to. So if I just think about the angle zero and what the x and y coordinates are there on the point that is on the circle at the angle zero, then I see that the x coordinate there is one because the distance from the origin to the circle is one because that's the radius of the circle. And the y coordinate there is zero. So cosine of zero is equal to one and sine of zero is equal to zero. Similarly, I could look at the angle pi over two which has its x-coordinate there 0 and its y-coordinate 1. So the cosine of pi over 2 is 0 and the sine of pi over 2 is 1. Looking at the angle pi, there the x is minus 1 and the y is 0. So the cosine of pi is minus 1 and the sine of pi is 0. And finally looking at 3 pi over 2, the x is 0 and the y is minus 1 which gives us cosine of 3 pi over 2 is equal to 0 and sine of 3 pi over 2 is equal to minus 1. So in general we know that the sines and cosines are just the x and y coordinates at each point on the circle. So I could go ahead and complete that ray and turn it into a right triangle. If I pull that right triangle out then I can start analyzing the cosines and sines of that angle theta by using right triangle trigonometry for some of our special angles. So let's consider the angle theta, and so that angle theta would be the angle theta in the triangle there, and let's consider that to be pi over 4. Well if that's the case then the right triangle that we would have created when we pulled it out would have been a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, or it would have two angles that are both pi over 4 as labeled here, and then there would be a right angle that I can put right here for you. Pen here. So I would go right in there. All right, so the hypotenuse of that right triangle would be 1 because remember that that hypotenuse is always the ray that goes from the origin, which is the center of the circle, to the edge of the circle. So the radius of the unit circle is 1. And then I can remember that each of the sides are the same, and they are 1 over root 2. So each of the sides of the 45, 45, 90 triangle, or pi over 4, pi over 4, pi over 2 triangle, from the unit circle, are 1 over root 2 and 1 over root 2, and the hypotenuse is 1. So using what we had on our first slide, I see that sine of pi over 4 is equal to cosine of pi over 4, which for both of those is 1 over root 2. And if you like to rationalize denominators, then you can write that as root 2 over 2. So now I know the cosine and the sine for 
pi over 4. And of course, if I know the cosine and the sine, then I also know the other four trig functions. Let's consider another special triangle that could come from our unit circle. Again, the hypotenuse is 1 because that is the radius of the unit circle. And in this case, I have that the angle on the left is pi over 6, the smaller angle, which would be, be equal to 30 degrees. And the angle on the top right is pi over 3, which would be 60 degrees. So what I have here is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And all I need to remember is that the hypotenuse is 1. And for me, I just remember that one of the sides is root 3 over 2, and the other side is 1 half. Root 3 over 2 is a little bit bigger than a half. And so all I need to do so I can remember how to organize this triangle is remember that the longest side of the triangle is root 3 over 2. So that means that the side that is down on a horizontal side there, um, which is adjacent to pi over 6, has to be root 3 over 2 because it's longer than the side that's adjacent to pi over 3. So I can organize my triangle in this way, and I have a, an easy way to remember how to do that. And then I use the rules again from our first slide to come up with the sines and cosines of each of these angles. So the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, and the cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Similarly, the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, and the cosine of pi over 3 is equal to 1 half. Now that I know those basic angles, so now I have 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, that was from our first slide, and we just looked at the special triangles for pi over 4 and for pi over 3 and pi over 6. I can use that information to find the sines and cosines of the angles that might fall in any of the other quadrants, but actually are the same as those triangles. So just remember that in the first quadrant, the cosine and the sine are both positive. Second quadrant, the cosine is negative and the sine is positive. In the third quadrant, all of them are negative, so the cosine and the sine is negative. And then in the fourth quadrant, the cosine is positive and the sine is negative. So you can use these basic rules, some very basic things to remember, so that you'll always be able to find cosines and sines of most of the things that you're going to find in your textbooks or in problems.